draw? Um, well, intriguing really because um, Iran we've never played before. Uh, obviously, we could have an all British tie, which will be um, you know, unique. But whatever happens there is going to be an emotional game because if you know, we, we everybody is of course is thinking about Ukraine and their people at this time. So, um, and then the states. I've got to know the coach quite well in the last few months and I think he's doing a really good job. Uh, a lot of good young players coming through. So, yeah, it's one of those groups, of course, where the top seeds will be expected to go through, but any of those games are games you could easily come unstuck in. What was your reaction you know, to the draw? It could have been harder, couldn't it? So you can be pleased that it was slightly softer, although still intriguing with some of those, some of those matches. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've been fortunate to attend five or six draws now with Nations Leagues and European qualifiers and the, the draws are fairly irrelevant you've got to go and win the games you know and um, I, I think historically England have had groups that you know with fixtures that have looked straightforward and haven't um, taken care of them so we've been able to do that in the last couple of years but we've got to do it this time as well we've never beaten the US in the World Cup Said, well, there you go. Then. <laughs> don't want to, yeah, don't want to put the mockers on it already. But you know, we've never beaten them in a World Cup, and they're mm. on the rise. Mm. Um, but you know, Greg Berhalter quite well, don't you? Is mm. it, do, do you view them as the, perhaps the stiffest test in the group? Well, I think in terms of uh, ranking, clearly, and um, you know, they're a team that uh, are definitely on the up, but. Yeah, look, if we play Scotland or Wales, it's a unique fixture. So that that we've lived through that with Scotland last year. Um, the team played Wales in 2016, which went right to the last minute. So they are always complicated games for us. And um, Iran is is one that I know least about. Although I've, I remember their games in the last World Cup where they did really well. So um, yeah, I'm I'm at the moment just. Um, filtering it all through and looking forward to getting down and watching a, a, a bit more of all the opponents really and in terms of like England's ambition uh, you, you know you, you, every tournament you take charge of seems to go one step further it's the next step <laughs> to well ultimately that's that's you know that's what we're here for we're trying to achieve that goal and um, it's possible because if you can get to a semi-final we said well then we could get to a final if you can get to a final then of course you can win so but we're one of several teams who are in that position there's I think it's quite wide open really there's a lot of very good teams a lot of very good coaches um, and of course on any given day any team in the competition can also beat any any other and knock them out so that's the beauty of cup football and uh, the world cup is um, is the competition it is because of that and then finally for me um, I know you haven't been here very long now but I, I don't know if you've got more of an impression of Qatar and you know uh, do you I know Nasser al Qatar from Qatar 2022 said he wants to meet you has, has that date been put in the diary and perhaps has your perception of Qatar changed a little bit whilst you've been here no I've spoken with Hassan today who I've met a few times and um, you know I think um, we have really good dialogue with the local organising committee. Um, we know there are some cultural differences. We, we've spoken about that. And um, they, they're aware there are some things that we um, would like to um, help see some change. Um, but equally, we're respectful that we're in a, another country and a different culture, a different religion. Um, we have to be ambassadors for our country and we have to be the right sort of diplomatic envoy if you like because if you want change to happen that has to be done with the right sorts of conversations in the right way maybe uh, your task for the next weeks and months will be convincing people to stop saying that England got an easy way into the next round will you be saying a lot of the, of the picture of Rob Green uh, maybe or that's what one of your tax tasks now well, yeah, that won't be very nice for Rob because I, I know Rob as well and uh, that, that was such a difficult night. Um, but, of course, that shows you exactly how complicated these fixtures are. You know, we, we had a draw with Algeria in that same group. Um, 
and that ended up meaning we played Germany in the second round. So the, there are all of the fixtures are complicated, and of course our supporters, rightly so, would expect us to win. We're the top-ranked team in the group, but um, football isn't so straightforward. You mentioned that Ireland has never played, plus you don't. Uh, you don't know the name of one of the opponents, mm. uh, maybe uh, one close rival, or maybe Ukraine in a game could be mm. politically charged, uh, emotionally charged. Uh, is that uncertainty around the group making things harder in terms of preparing, uh, scouting, etc.? Et no, because um, look, we all totally understand Ukraine's situation and we have huge empathy and sympathy for them. So. Uh, it, it isn't important whether we can scout or not. It, the situation there is far more important than, than that. Um, from our side, we now know that we will be playing on the first match day. So we know the timelines. We know we will have to be here very quickly and um, adjust. And we, we know we've, we haven't got a big recovery from the last Premier League games. So those things are things we can go away and, and work on now and try and uh, prepare in the best possible way. Uh, that uh, thing, the schedule, changed a lot of the preparation uh, of your plans uh, with, since the last Euro, the last World Cup? Yeah, well, the last World Cup we had, I think, 28 days before our first match working with the team. And this time we'll have six or seven, and that includes the day where we fly and the day after the league matches. So no, no time at all. It will be like a normal qualification camp for us rather than a, a World Cup preparation. Yes, a lot. Yes, a lot. Yeah. Um, this could be a, the opportunity for football. There are lots of talk all this week about football unity in people. Could be football achieving what uh, politicians don't about unity in people, unity in countries, unity in all of us? Well, the beauty of a World Cup. Um, I've been to a World Cup as a player, as a coach, as a fan. And when I was following the World Cup in Brazil, uh, I was working for the team, but I was traveling on my own and you saw the interaction between people of all countries, all the different continents. It's, it's an amazing thing, you know, the color, uh, the love of football bringing people together. So that they are the things we should focus on. Um, I understand we have to talk about other serious things, of course, but that is the opportunity that football has to bring, bring all those different cultures together.